Hello, and welcome to tonight's live chapter reading of Born to Fight, Can't Resist You Book One by Brittany Ann. Brought to you by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one, damn it to hell. Hunter needed to get the hell out of here, but the woman's shrieks sliced at his heartstrings or whatever was left of them. And he'd be damned if he ran away like the two cowards they'd sent along with him. Dropping his pack and pulling out his knife, Hunter raced toward the group. Three men surrounded the woman, each in the same black and red UNR attire. The redhead was being pulled from one soldier to the other, and it was abundantly clear by the look on the men's faces and the way they tugged at the redhead's clothing what they planned to do with her. Hunter's knife sliced into the back of the first man the one with his hands too tight on the girl's hips. He screamed like the sorry excuse for a man that he was and fell to the ground. The woman surged forward, falling to her knees after being shoved by one of the other two men. Then they were upon him, <clears throat> they were upon him, but they should have known who they were messing with. Hunter wasn't feeling particularly enthusiastic about this, so he'd lay low and let them tire themselves out. He dodged every punch, kick, and jab with ease. It only took a few minutes for the punches to slow, the kicks to weaken, the jabs to become few and far between. It was time for Hunter to make his move. In three quick movements, Hunter punched the first man square in the jaw, knocking him back into the ground, and kicked the second man in the back of his leg, knocking him to his knees, and kicking him right in the nose. He fell backwards, moaning in pain. For good measure, Hunter lifted the first man up again and punched him once more, ensuring he was out cold. Then he ran to the redhead, who was still on the ground with tear-stained eyes. Hey, hey, Hunter started. Listen, you're safe now. I'm with the resistance and you're safe. Her eyes widened with what Hunter swore was fear and she began shaking her head. No, she said lowly, no. What, lady, I'm trying to help you. Resistance, she screamed at the top of her lungs. Resistance, over here, help me, help, resistance. Hunter prided himself on being quick to respond, but he could not wrap his head around what was happening. Granted, he didn't run into many civilians, but he never imagined this. Those men were trying to rape her and she was screaming for their help. Help me. He sprang into action, pushing forward and clamping his hand down over her mouth as she struggled beneath him. His chest ached at the forceful action, but what choice did he have? It was that, or Hunter saw stars. Something big and blunt hit his head with brutal force, and he fell over. He squeezed his eyes and forced himself up, ignoring the dizziness and blurred vision as he tried to reg regain consciousness. Thank you, oh thank you. It was that redhead talking to the soldiers he'd sliced into? What? And then hands were on him, pulling him back and holding him still. White hot pain seared through his veins as a knife cut deep into his abdomen. It yanked out and stabbed again, this time a bit higher. It might have stabbed a third time, but Hunter started to feel numb. He was fading fast. Too fucking fast. He put his head down and then shoved back, knocking his skull into the nose of the man who had been holding onto his arms. He stumbled back and Hunter steadied himself on his feet. Yanking his knife out, Hunter spun toward the man. He threw a punch, but the man ducked. Suddenly, something sharp sliced into his back. Hunter spun around to see the other two men he'd thought he'd knocked out earlier. Just his fucking luck. Bracing himself, he considered his options. His knife would work if he could get close to them, but hell, he wasn't going to be strong enough to take down all three with just hand to hand. He could go back to his earlier tactic, dodge all attacks until they tired out. But again, who would tire out first, them or Hunter? He had a gun, yes, but the minute he fired it, they would have reinforcements filing in, fast. His, his a fist hit his back, sending shooting pains up his spine. Hunter fell to his knees, the thick moisture of blood making its way down his abs and thighs. He looked up at the three men. Hunter had shattered one's nose for sure. The other had a bloody forehead and a gash on his cheek. 
Hunter needed to do more damage. He needed to get up. He pushed from the ground, but quickly fell back down. And had he not caught himself with his right hand, he would have gone face first into the dirt. The men were laughing, and so was the woman? Jesus. Hunter's head was aching, his mind quickly fading. It felt like he was drunk and not the fun kind of drunk. Damn it. No other options. He gathered every bit of training he had in him and focused all his energy. He only had one chance at this. Hunter reached down and pulled out his gun, praying he was just as good of a shot while semi-conscious and praying even harder that he and his two backups could get the hell out of there before the reinforcements came. The odds were not in his favor. What the fuck was he thinking? Jerry groaned. Paul shrugged, trying to keep pace. Who the hell knows? Let's just get out of this. Jerry huffed. Paul rolled his eyes and carried on, not in the mood to deal with the attitude of his partner. They were nowhere near out of the woods yet, literally and figuratively. And if they didn't keep going, they'd all be screwed. Hunter moaned, shit. With the way they'd been pulling at him, they'd most likely dislocated one or both of his shoulders. But hell, what choice did they have? They had to push on. He probably wouldn't make it anyway, but they'd, got, they'd get some wild shit from Sawyer if they didn't at least try. The dude is as good as dead. What the fuck are we doing? Jerry burst out. Paul sighed. You know how Sawyer will feel if we don't come back with him, even if it's just a body. Plus, Hayden and Derek, they'd have our heads. It was the truth, but Paul would be lying if he said he didn't want to just drop Hunter's arms and run. It would be safer that way, and everyone knew Hunter wasn't exactly a fan of him or Jerry to begin with. Three gunshots in the distance shocked him from his thoughts. Jerry must have had the same reaction, because they both stopped where they stood and stared at each other. There's some brush over there. Let's pull him under there. Only the red shirts had guns, and if they had sent out the red shirts, fuck it. Okay. Paul responded reluctantly. They turned and pulled Hunter, pushing him under the flowering bush and shoving some leaves around him so that he'd be harder to see. I don't feel good about, it, about this, Paul muttered. Jerry rolled his eyes. Another gunshot sounded, and this time it sounded louder. Let's go. Could Paul really live with himself after leaving another human to those monsters? Sure, Hunter already had one foot out the door, but hell, the man never would have left one of them. He'd take a bullet for anyone, and despite how much Hunter may have disliked Paul and Jerry, they both knew that he'd defend them with his last breath. Could they really just leave him there? Sawyer's going to murder us. I'd rather him than them, Jerry whispered hurriedly. They started running. Sorry, Hunter. Where are they going? Hunter's head hurt, but not quite as much as his body. Everything was on fire. His shoulders ached, but his back burned. His abdomen was throbbing. Was he stabbed? He was. But Paul and Jerry, they pulled him out, right? Did they kill those men or? Hunter's memory failed him. There were three men. They were hurting a woman. Yes, that's what had happened. And Hunter, he saved her. But then what? Damn it. Hunter tried to shout. He called for Paul, knowing he had a conscience unlike the other moron. He called and called, but his throat didn't produce any sound. Nothing worked. He tried to move his arm, but everything just ached. He stared at them as they grew smaller and smaller and then disappeared into nothing at all, desperately screaming the entire time, but only he could hear it. So this was how he died. At least that woman was safe. At least he had saved her, right? He thought he did, but damn it, he just couldn't remember. The world went black again. I'm sorry, Sawyer, but I'm not taking those two, Hunter said. This mission is easy, yes, but it's far. I'm not spending two weeks with those two idiots just because you say so. Hunter eyed his friend, waiting for him to back down. He should have known better. Sawyer Williams did not back down from anything. Listen, Hunter, the skills you have because of your dad? Hell, nobody can teach these kids more than you can. You're a field guy and you're the best. I'm trained. I'm not a trainer. Sawyer sighed. <sighs> Your father was the greatest leader the resistance ever had, and he was never even a part of it. But we still credit him, and we do it because of you. He was not a teacher 
or an army trainer or anything like that. He was a man with incredible skills and a desire to share those skills with his son, with you. <clears throat> Honor him by passing them on. Hunter tightened his hands into fist. Leave my father out of this, Sawyer. You know I'm right, man. Sawyer put a hand on Hunter's shoulder. Give him a chance, it's an easy mission. I might kill those two out there. You know that, right? Hunter joked, chuckling. Sawyer's smile grew and a laugh sounded from his throat. You better come back with them, Hunter, both of them. No killing them on this trip. He shook his head. Maybe the next one, depending on their performance here. And if they come back without me, Hunter mused. Sawyer laughed and squeezed Hunter's shoulder before removing his hand and moving away. If they come back without you, I'll give them a fucking trophy. We both know you're unkillable. Hunter shook his head, staring down at the floor, a small smile lingered in his lips. If only, he muttered quietly to himself. If only. Hunter's eyes opened, slowly, but the action drained him. Hunter's endurance was top notch, and yet simply opening his eyes took every bit of energy he had, and to no avail. It was dark out, and while the moonlight gave off hints of light, the trees blocked out the majority of it. Nature sang around him, a beautiful soundtrack to die to. If Hunter had to go, this was certainly the place to do it. Is that what was happening? Was he dying? Hunter didn't hurt anymore. He just felt ice, thick and sharp, pumping through his veins. That's how this goes, huh? Well, so be it. It was better this way. Sawyer was going to owe those two pricks a trophy. Hunter's eyes fell closed again. He hoped with everything he had that Paul and Jerry made it back to the compound. Killing him damn well better have been worth it. Maybe they left to get help. Unlikely, but maybe. Hunter couldn't help but fade into the darkness again. And as he listened to the rustling leaves of autumn, he had a chilling feeling that he wouldn't be opening his eyes again without a miracle. For some reason, the thought felt more comforting than frightening. Hunter's legs were burning. He'd never felt such pain in his life. And it wasn't just his legs. His stomach was churning. Throwing up three times apparently wasn't enough because his stomach threatened to empty itself again if he didn't slow down. His chest ached. His eyes were dry and stinging. His arms throbbed. I... He tried to breathe out the words, but his lungs lacked the air necessary to get out a sentence. I... I can't. He spit a desperate attempt to stop himself from vomiting again. It only made him more nauseous. Can't? The word pierced his ears and Hunter flinched. Can't? It was louder this time. Fuck the word can't. That word shouldn't be in your damn vocabulary. Hunter felt like he might faint. He fell to his knees and the motion made him heave. Nothing came out this time. It hurt just the same. Get up. The voice was strong, but just soft enough. Get up. Louder. I... I, don't you fucking dare say you can't. But, Dad, no. His voice was so firm, and then he was kneeling in front of him. Hunter stared up at his father and wondered how he did it. Hunter couldn't go on. He desperately didn't want to disappoint his dad, but he just couldn't do it anymore. The training was too hard. He wasn't strong enough. I, Hunter coughed. I'm not, you, Dad, I'm not, not strong enough. A hand under his chin pulled his head up. The man staring down at him was hard, dark hair and light eyes, a shadow of facial hair covering his jaw. He was dangerous, skilled, stronger than anyone else in the world. Hunter would never be like him. No matter how much he prayed he would, no matter how much he hoped he would, Hunter was not his dad and he never would be. I don't ever want to hear you say that, Hunter, he said sternly. Hey, Look at me. Don't you ever fucking say that. Hunter's eyes fell to the grass again. He hated being a disappointment, especially to him. It killed him inside. When the UNR took over, I had to run for days. I was hiding, fighting, running, and repeat. After 13 days of nonstop running and fighting, I was ready to give up. I was ready to call it quits. My training didn't matter at that point. I was fucking tired, Hunter, and it was useless. I had tried seven different times to get out of the city, and it didn't seem possible. Hunter stared up at his dad. His stomach wasn't flipping quite so furiously anymore. 
I gave up. I was tired. My body hurt. I had been pretty cut up from fighting. I was done. What, what changed? Hunter had never heard this story before. I heard a woman scream. Hunter stared, waiting for him to continue. He didn't. You s saved her, he concluded. A smile pressed acro uh, spread across his father's lips. I did. How? I ran into battle, attacked the five men who were surrounding her, and left them dead in the road. Then I grabbed her, picked her up like a baby, and got the hell out of the city. When we were out, I ran for miles in the forest. I held her the entire time until I knew she was safe. Hunter's eyes widened. I was ready to give up because I hurt. I was selfish. I didn't care about going on for myself, so I was ready to call it quits. But then I heard her scream, and it reminded me that it wasn't about me anymore. There were others out there suffering, and no matter how fucking weak I got, I had to keep going. If not for me, then for them. And that's what I did. You held a woman for miles? But how? Oh, it hurt like hell. Just like this hurts you. But I'd heard her scream and I knew I would kill and die before I ever heard that scream again. So I kept going. I kept her safe. And because of that, she kept me safe. Hunter looked down at his hands, covered in dirt and blood. Then he looked back up at the man in front of him. I wasn't always the man you see in front of you, Hunter. You need to know that. But I found someone and something I believe in. And I fought for it. I still fight for it. And now I'm teaching you how to fight for it. There are other people out there, people who are suffering and hurting, and us, we can help them. If you can't keep going for you, then you keep going for them, for the innocent people, like that woman who saved my life that day. Who was she? He chuckled. That's for me to know, kiddo. He patted Hunter's shoulder. You ready? Hunter looked at a boulder in front of him and took a deep inhale. He tried to shove off the ground, but his legs had turned to mush. Come on, Hunter, you got this. Get up. Get up, Hunter. Get the fuck up. I can't. Come on, Hunter. Get up. So weak. Get up. Get up. Get the fuck up. Hope you enjoyed the chapter reading for today from Born to Fight by Brittany Ann. Thank you. Have a good night.